Welcome to the second video regarding searching using Ancestry.com. The first video looked at profile searching using the data of an individual profile. In this video we'll search using the card catalog, not specifically from a tree. And this is probably one of the most underutilized techniques in Ancestry and also one of the most valuable. Another search technique for Ancestry, and one that is not used often enough, is to search the card catalogue. And this allows me to be very specific in which data sets and databases I'm looking at. So from pretty much anywhere in Ancestry, I go to search card catalogue. And this brings me to a very simple screen. On the top and left hand side there are two search bars, one for title and one for keywords. And then our normal filters that we see in most search screens by record type, by record location, and by record dates. If I know the title, I can type in part of all the title into the title bar and find a specific database. But what if I'm looking for a type of record? In this case, my investigation is, was Ernest Hemingway drafted during the Second World War? So let me type in draft registration into the keyword and do a search. There are seven different databases that involve draft registration. Let me make sure I'm just dealing with the US. And let me make sure I'm just dealing with the Second World War, which would be the 1940s. Now I'm down to just two databases or catalogs. One says draft registration cards 1942 and the other one is draft cards young man 1940 to 1947 and something we should always do in Ancestry when we're looking at any kind of catalog or database is read what the description is so let me go into this first one both records contain a million records and this says a database is an index collection of draft cards fourth registration I often refer to as the old man registration. That's not enough information. So let me click on the actual catalog and read the description below the search bars. Now this gives me a lot of information, what's on the record, which states are involved. But crucially, it tells me that this is for men born between 1877 and 1897. Well, I do know that Ennis Hemingway was born in 1899. So this record set probably does not contain any information about Ennis. So let me go back and look at the other database. And perhaps we can read down here. And there doesn't seem to be any specific limitations other than the age. This would cover Ennis, give some information. And there doesn't seem to be any states precluded from this data set. So I think this is pretty pretty you know, good to go on a search. So let me search for Ennis. And as we see, as in many search, as I type the person's name, Ancestry suggests somebody from my tree. So let me go ahead and let Ancestry type in the data for me. And I'll bring it over from the tree. His full name, date of birth, and in this case, his spouse. That all looks good. Let me do a search. Well, there's only five records that meet the search criteria in my search bar over here. And luckily, I know the exact birth date of Ernest Hemingway and where he's born. So this has to be the top record, has to be our Ernest. So let me click on the image to see what information it contains. And here we get Ernest's draft registration card. Um, we can see his mailing address was in San Francisco. Paula in Cuba, so he's actually living in Cuba at this time, I would guess. And his contact person was a Mrs. George Gelhorn in St. Louis, and he's currently an unemployed writer. So this will allow me to do a lot more searching based on this information. I can see if there's any information about Cuba in Havana, 
giving the exact information of his mailing address, or who G Mrs. George Gellhorn or George Gellhorn, her husband, will be. So that's a very quick way of finding information. Let me do a search on a location I expect Ennis Hemingway to be in. So rather than clear this out, I'll just go back to CAD Catalog again. It'll take me back to the beginning. And Key, Key West was a favorite place of Ennis Hemingway. So let me type in Key West here and see what we can come up with. And again, not many records, but let me limit this anyway to, to the USA. And we know we're interested in Florida, so let me interest, reduce this to Florida. And I need to look at the dates. There's only seven records. And as I, as I highlight each one, you'll see a little bit about each one of these databases popping up. And the one that interests me is number two here. The database contains searchable images for a variety of years of the newspaper Key West Citizen. Key West, Florida. So this might have information about A.S. Hemingway in it. So let me click on that. Well, luckily for me, this seems to have been indexed. So I can type in again here, A.S. Hemingway. Again, help, Ancestry helps me fill this in. Let me do a search on A.S. Hemingway. And there's a number of results, 59 results. And it looks like these are all types of newspaper cuttings. So let me just type a random one to pull up the record. Oh, and we can see this is an image from the Key West Citizen and uh, appearing in the current issue of the Fort Worth Telegram was an article with pictures showing Nancy Carroll showing the large sailfish of the film actress landed while recently angling in Key West and obviously she was with Ernest Hemingway right so we can tie those people together so as we can see the card catalog will pull up records that are either difficult to find or almost impossible to find if they're not indexed using a normal search on Ancestry it's crucial that you use this as part of your discovery and search planning I hope this video has encouraged you to make more use of the card catalogue in your searching on Ancestry. Good luck with future searching and don't forget to look at the third video in this series which is actually called Clean Searching. We'll explore that more.